Hi, I'm Kent. How much does the thickness of the walls of a pot impact the volume of the pot? It turns out quite a bit. Some of my molds are getting a little bit old and I want to go ahead and make a bunch of different designs. One of the things I've realized in taking my ceramics class is pushing my ideas around forms has actually been really good. Basically, we're beginning a bunch of different exercises and trying a bunch of different things. And with slip casting, normally that's a little bit hard because the overhead of making the plaster molds is so large. But that was really the motivation behind Shapecast. It really lowers the overhead so that you can make molds much easier. So I started playing around with a bunch of designs and I went ahead and printed up a design proof for one of them. And it's this form right here, which is really inspired by this mug right here. So for a little bit of a story, several years ago, before I got into ceramics, I was dating a woman up in San Francisco and she had a really strong design sense. And we we're wandering around the city and she showed me Heath Ceramics. So Heath was a San Francisco ceramic artist and she wound up building a factory up in Sausalito, just north of the Bay. I ended up doing the factory tour, which was really fun and wandered around and saw them making their pots. And this was well before I knew how to make pots. They slip cast a lot of them. This mug in particular is actually slip cast, both the handle and the body itself. They also use jolly and jiggering and make a lot of really simple, elegant forms that I really like. That relationship came and went, but Heath Ceramics definitely stayed with me. So fast forward to a few years ago when I started ceramics, I figured one of the things I wanted to try and challenge myself to do was basically be able to recreate their forms. And so I'm starting to do that right now. These profiles are very similar. They're not exactly the same. If you want to sell pots, don't do this. Don't copy someone else's form. You'd be running into IP protection laws at that point. But for yourself, it's no big deal. Basically, I sat down and I traced this form. It's not exactly the same, but the profiles are really similar. The foot is slightly different. It's a little bit deeper than the original. I've had some problems with glazing pots to my shelf, so I want to give myself a little bit more margin for error. And the original pot actually tapers in at the top. And with Shapecast, currently you can't do that. This one tapers in just a little bit. I made a small modification so that I can do that just now and see if it works or not. And maybe I'll need to do a two-part mold to actually make this work. So that was the inspiration for this form. And I went ahead and ran through Shapecast and I printed out the design proof, which is exactly this. It's a two scale representation of the pot. So I could feel it. Basically, did I get the scale right when I was drawing it? Does the curves look right? And it's very similar. It's not exactly the same, but it's very similar. I think it's going to be a good starting point for me taking this form and then tweaking it how I really want it to be. One of the features I added early on into Shapecast was basically estimating the volume of the final pot. So I went ahead and looked at that. And here I printed it out and basically says the final pot volume is almost 450 milliliters or 15 ounces. And that didn't seem right to me. I knew this pot in particular didn't hold 15 ounces. So I was wondering if there was a bug in my software or if it's the thickness of the pot that's actually influencing things. So let's go ahead and measure up the volume of this pot so we can get a good baseline. So we're just gonna do this with weight. We got some water here. I'm just gonna pour it in. And spill over my bench here. Don't want excess water on the scale. All right, that's close to the top. Maybe there's a little bit more space there. Shapecast actually estimates all the way to the top of the room, but let's call it maybe 385 grams, which is 385 milliliters. All right, so Shapecast estimated this form here will take 448 milliliters, and we just measured 385. 385 milliliters is basically 13 ounces. 13 ounces makes sense. They probably designed this for 12 ounces of liquid and then basically gave a little space at the top. So we're off by you know a good two ounces or you know 65 milliliters. That's a pretty big discrepancy. So I was trying to figure out what was going on. So I think it's useful to go under the hood a little bit and try and understand how Shapecast calculates this volume. So here is the black line that I drew. This is the profile of the pot that you input to Shapecast. And what it does internally that you don't see is it does a projection inwards to basically estimate the thickness of the clay or the thickness of the ceramics in particular, since this is the final fired piece. In my current code that if you Shapecast right now, that's 4.25 millimeters as the wall thickness of the clay. And then it goes ahead and makes this new curve and uses that to calculate the volume. 
So this is where we get the 448, which is the same number here. So that's good. One thing you'll note is that this curve here doesn't really do what slip does. So like this sharp point, that's not gonna happen. This would actually get filled in most likely. The slip itself would probably do some sort of curve like that and smooth it out. But is this 4.25 number the right number to use or not? The wall thickness on this is actually much thicker. So the 4.25 came from some of my original pots. So this is one that I made recently and it's one of the thinner ones. And if I try and measure the thickness, which is a little bit hard because it's curved, I'm getting like four and a half. So this is even a little bit thicker than the number in the software. And this is relatively thin. The Heath pot is much thicker. So if we measure this one or try to, this one's 5.81. So I went into the software and tweaked that number since I have access to the source code. And here's what we get. So again, we have the original profile of the pot. We have the offset that's currently in the software. And I put in 5.8 millimeters for the offset. And we went and changed from 448 milliliters to 406 milliliters. So we're getting closer. Now we're only 20 milliliters off. And again, I think this curve down here will be some of that discrepancy. And this is bigger than what we measured. So taking that off will result in slightly smaller volumes. So I think that's what's going on, but can we test this even more? What about this? Can I put water in here and see how much volume this takes? I know the thickness of this, it's specified in the software as 2.4 millimeters, and it's meant to be relatively thin so you can print it quickly. And we can go ahead and measure it up. I'm actually only getting 1.24, which is interesting. So there may be something else going on. Anyways, so I went ahead and used the theoretical number of 2.4, of which is this orangish yellow line in the middle. So it's even thinner than what the software is doing and should be closer to an approximation of that. And so with that, we get 503 milliliters or 17 ounces. So let's go ahead and try that out and see if we get close to 500 milliliters. And just for completeness, this is 18.3 ounces. This discrepancy, I have to look at that. I don't know exactly what's going on. I hadn't measured this before. Kent from the future here. I just went and double checked my code and the 2.4 millimeter number I had was wrong. That was a different number. It's actually 1.2. And so going back and measuring and we're getting pretty close to 1.2 within the tolerance of the 3D print. So this number here is wrong. And going back, I went ahead and reran it. And so here's the actual curve. So at 1.2 millimeters, it's 540 milliliters, 18.3 ounces. And that matches exactly what we have here, 540, 18.3 ounces. Mystery solved. So we know this cup here is 385 milliliters and we're getting numbers ranging from 540 for this down to basically 400 for the estimate of this using my different form. So that's a significant difference, 100 and, you know, 140 milliliters difference or almost five ounces. That was actually fascinating. Like I knew the thickness of the pot would influence the volume, but I didn't realize it was so drastic. For the exact same size cup, going from a wall thickness of my 3D print to the wall thickness of the Heath pot, which is thick, results in a huge difference in volume. And obviously, if you're trying to slip cast your own pots, your own wall thickness will change as well. Uh, one thing I will note is that part of the reason the Heath pots are so thick is that they are made with low fire clay. So I think they're making them thick, so they're stronger. I have had one of these break, unfortunately, before. It was a very sad day. So it was really interesting to learn. I knew that the wall thickness would impact the volume of the pot, and that's part of the reason I put that offset into my software but it may not be enough depending on how thick you make your pots. It's probably on the thin side for most folks. What I didn't anticipate was changing the wall thickness by only a few millimeters would have such a large impact on the volume. One of the things I'm thinking about doing is making this thickness parameter a thing you can set inside of Shapecast. There's actually a few numbers inside of Shapecast that are right now just constants and wind up producing the final results. I think for more advanced users, it might make sense to go ahead and expose those so you can actually really dial in your designs. 
Along with this, as I alluded to in the beginning of the year, I'm thinking of switching Shapecast over to be a paid version. Right now I'm thinking of having maybe some sort of hobbyist version where it's simplified and things like these details we won't be able to specify. And then maybe more of a pro version where if you really want to try and dial in these numbers and get them exact, you will be able to. I hope you found that interesting. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks.